Welcome to the Advanced 3ds Max Ambient Occlusion tutorial. I will set up a simple scene with three objects and a ground plane. We will use the Mental Ray Renderer and bake the Ambient Occlusion maps with the Render to Texture tool from 3ds Max, short RTT. And first we need to choose the Mental Ray Renderer. To do so, you click on Rendering, Render Setup. In the Render Setup dialog, the Common tab is already open. Scroll down to Assign Renderer, click the Triple Points icon next to the Productions Renderer and choose Mental Ray, in my case NVIDIA Mental Ray, by double click or hit OK. You can now close the renderer setup. Now since we changed the renderer, it is a must to change the materials to Mental Ray compatible materials, like the arc and design, short A and D materials. It is a must to change the material system, since the Mental Ray renderer doesn't render ambient occlusions correctly. Same goes for other effects. So if your ambient occlusions doesn't look like they should, it's definitely because one of your materials is a standard material. For our example, it's enough to simply select the A and D material, select the Matter Finish template, which renders quite quick. Select all objects and click the Assign Material to Selected icon. Close the Material Editor and take a breath. We will bring up the Render to Texture now. Either you click on Rendering and select Render to Texture or, as indicated, click the zero on your keyboard. Shortcuts shorten always your workflow, therefore simply press zero. So, now we have the RTT view open and still all objects selected. Selections are an important thing to keep in mind when it comes to the RTT, since you can have unique settings for each individual object. Then it is possible to select all and set global stuff like save all textures into one folder, or set the padding for all the same, and so on. Anyway, the first thing you should always do is set the padding higher. Padding Padding repeats pixel at the seams. It is quite important to have some spare pixels left when it comes to real-time engines or game engines. Most times these engines use MIP maps, and if the lower resolution MIPs are used, it simply misses sometimes pixels and renders them black or transparent, depending on your texture. It looks like this in the engine later on. We will encounter this problem anyway, since 3ds Max has a bug when it comes to batch rendering, means rendering our four objects one after another. So set the padding quite high, 10 will do. Since we have no UV sets prepared, we will use automatic unwrap from 3ds Max. It will simply put an unwrapper on our objects using the default settings and UV wrap or unwrap the UVs for us. It is good enough for our example. Now we need to choose what we want to bake. Usually you bake not only the ambient occlusion, but anyway we simply select ambient occlusion MR. The MR indicates it's a mental ray specific channel. It won't be available for a scanline renderer system for example. So click on ambient occlusion and it will be added to the output list. Usually it will use the bake texture, create a new material, a shell material and assign that bake texture into a material slot. This is the target slot, like where to put the bake texture to. If you leave it blank, it will bake the texture, save it on your disk and you have to assign the texture later in the material editor manually. So to have it more comfortable, we will tell the RTT to create a new material, use a fong, bling or whatever and assign that bake texture to the diffuse channel. We will have it easier when it comes to export the objects, you will see. So, scroll down to Baked Material, select to create a new baked, choose a blin or fong material, so scroll up again and use diffuse color as target slot now. You see, the available target slots have changed, accordingly to the material chosen in the baked material options. For the texture size, choose 1K and now the ambient occlusion related stuff. It's a selected element Unix setting, means since you have the ambient occlusion output selected, you see this dialog. If you would have some other output selected, for example the diffuse output, you would see completely different options here, like to include and bake shadows and so on and so on. So we have AO settings to adjust. Samples. The samples define how accurate our AO will be calculated. The higher the samples, the smoother the result. But increasing the samples will cost render time. You should go with power of two values in first, means 16, 32, 64, 128 and so on. Usually I use 32 up to 128. 
128 I use most times for 4K or bigger textures. In fact, 32, 64 are the way to go. The rest of the values are fine-tuning and you barely touch them. Ok, let's check everything again. I tell you from experience, you should and will double check everything when it comes to render to texture. So, objects selected, padding set to 10, automatic unwrap on channel 3, we want to bake and output ambient occlusion, texture size is 1k by 1k, target slot is set, samples set, create a new fong material, ok. Oh wait, I want to save the textures in a different location. So scroll up and choose another location here. Done. Okay, fire. Let's boost the time a bit. A side note. You can adjust the padding like you want, but you will never see the padding in the renderer view. You have to check your padding after the texture is baked. You need to open that texture or view it with Photoshop or any picture viewer. So don't get confused. Just a standard error message from Mentoray. Since the box goes through the ground and ray tracing is freaking out a bit, simply ignore it. Okay, swoosh, rendering is done. And in the background you might have noticed the textures better, the view changed a bit. You see a bit more shadows. In fact, the AO is already applied for the viewport. Okay, cool. Let's check the materials. Usually, Mentoray bakes the texture and creates a shell material. There is a simple reason for that. You have your scene filled up and prepared with materials and would like to check the baker textures, but keep the original material. You bake the textures and compare the result between viewport and real rendering, so it will use the baked textures for your viewport, but the real materials for your renderer. If you would export the objects now, no materials will be exported since it is a shell material. We need to clean up the scene now. This is kinda easy. Simply select all objects, Click Update Baked Materials, select Keep Baked Materials and Clear the Shell Materials. This will create a Fong material, copy the baked textures into the diffuse slot, delete the old original materials as well as the shells and assign that new standard material with just a diffuse texture to the objects. It is wise to save the scene beforehand because you save all your original materials. You can now export the objects just for test. Again, we choose the Open Collada exporter. Take care to enable or check the Copy Images and click OK. So, switch over to Ventus. By the way, the scene is set up as usual with an orbit camera with greater distance and an axis with 90 degree rotation on the x-axis. Select File, Import, Geometry. Choose our file. You see the Images folder. They are all our ambient occlusions copied to. Select the file and hit Import. Now the Import Preview is open and you see something is strange. The mapping looks totally crazy. Sure, because we automatically unwrapped everything to UV channel 3. Ventus takes just UV channel 1. And UV 1 has no coordinates applied, just the defaults. So, back to Max. Select one of your objects, 
you see the automatic unwrap modifier is still on our object. And the selected map channel is channel 3, down here. We have two options to move the channel number 3 to channel number 1. One way is to simply select all objects, convert them to editable polys while the same as collapse the modifier stack. Assign a new unwrap modifier. By default, the new unwrapper will map the channel 1. Simply type in channel 3 and the dialog will pop up. Here you can choose to move, in our case, channel 1 to channel 3. Or what we want, click Abandon. This means simply switch to channel 3. No changes are made then. It's just to show what's defined in channel 3. If you have a look at the UV editor, you can see the properly mapped object. Now again type in the channel number 1 instead of 3. The dialog pops up again and now move channel 3 mapping to channel 1. This will transfer the UV coordinates from channel 3 to channel 1. And the same for all other objects. The other option would be don't collapse or convert the objects. Simply do the move process inside the automatic unwrapping modifier. So, export that bunch of objects again. Check copy images, switch to Ventus and cancel the import. And again, file, import, geometry. Import our least exported object. Okay, looks better now, but not correct. Who? Huh? You missed the other tutorials. I guess not. The trick is check flip V coordinates. Surprise! Everything is properly now, except you see these transparent seams? These are real UV seams, and usually to prevent these seams, we told Max to use padding, a padding of 10 pixels. But still, there are seams. That's the bug I told you beforehand. If you batch render to texture, only the very first baked object has correct padding. You can try whatever you want, you won't get it to work. It's definitely a bug of Max, which is since year 2K, if I remember correctly. Anyway, there are workarounds. The one is bake each object manually. Click the object, hit bake texture, wait for it to finish, click the next, bake texture, and so on. This will cost you hours of just sitting in front of 3ds Max and waiting for the next object to be ready. The other workaround is to get flat iron. You should Google for that. It's a very handy tool, especially if you plan to bake textures for a wall virtual set or bigger scenes. Okay, still, import that object. We will bake each map individually later. So, go into the hierarchy container of our imported object. You see, the material is created, the texture is loaded and assigned. We will now delete the material nodes and apply a simple white color to fully use our ambient occlusion. There you go. Seriously, I can't help myself, but ambient occlusions look always great. So, let's take care of the seams. Switch back to Max. Select just the sphere. Bring up the Render to Texture dialog by pressing 0. Hehe, <laughs> shortcut used. You see, padding is still set at 10, but was ignored. For the mapping, this time we will use the existing channel number 1. By the way, we could force that now for all objects, so select all and assign channel 1 again. Select the sphere, and I'm gonna save the new bake texture now directly into our Ventus project images folder. And click render.
This will create just the sphere ambient occlusion and save it directly into our Ventus Images folder. In Ventus, click the texture loader and relocate our new sphere AO. If you now compare the old with the new bake texture, you see the difference of the padding. And you see, it wasn't a model or UV problem, it was simply a faulty buggy renderer. You won't believe how much time I spent to write a bug report for Autodesk. So the same for the teapot. So, looks great, right? Still you can adjust the colors, use a second texture, apply reflections and so on and so on. And this is how you get AOs rendered in Max with Mental Ray, exported into Ventus and solve some issues. Enjoy!